Hey, this is Igor from hdhand.com. In previous tutorial on pre-multiplication, we learned general concepts of pre-multiplication that apply not only to Avidias but uh, any compositing application. Now that we know the basics, let's look at various places in DS where pre-multiplication settings are important. But before we do that, let's just quickly review what we're talking about. An RGB image is often mathematically multiplied with its own alpha producing an image like this because the black area of the alpha is considered zero and the white area of the alpha is considered one and everything in between is uh, values between zero and one so mathematically anything you multiply by zero is zero therefore transparent and black and anything you multiply by one is unchanged so we get the image of the sky fully unchanged with everything else gone black. Pre-multiplication is a necessary step in compositing. Most applications do not require it, but some favor one or the other method. So it's important to know what you're doing because you can produce wrong results, an image that looks like this, which is an image that's not pre-multiplied, but you're telling Avid that it is. So it's interpreting it incorrectly. Or you can have an image that essentially is pre-multiplied, but we're telling Avid that it's not pre-multiplied. And when we zoom in, we see this dark halo around the guy's hair. So let's look at first place, which is the capture settings. Here in capture settings, the very first thing we see is the pre-multiplied alpha checkbox. The important thing to note is, I believe in um, DS version 10.2 or maybe it was 10.3, I forgot. Avid has rearranged the order of these things. So if you have an older DS, all these concepts still apply, but the layout of the capture settings box may be different, where you'll have the media capture at the very bottom of this uh, window. So the very first thing we see is uh, pre-multiplied alpha checkbox. Uh, all this is, is it will enable a tagging of the file once you bring it in, basically telling DS, treat this file as if it's pre-multiplied or treat this file if it's, if, as if it's not pre-multiplied. So let's set up for pre-multiplied import and uh, capture target will be our source folder. I'll close this. Underneath we have two TIFF files. One is called tutorial pre-multiplied, the other one is called tutorial non-pre-multiplied. I will capture this file. And I will also capture the non-pre-multiplied file using these same settings. Remember, we left this checkbox checked as pre-multiplied alpha. Here's our source folder here. And these are the two files that I just brought in. If you right-click on any of these clips and select properties and look under file info, it says right here pre-multiplied alpha because that's the tag that we enabled. And it will say the same thing on both of these files, pre-multiplied alpha. So DS doesn't really know what's in the file. It's what we tell the DS. If I load this file in here, there's our guy, there's the alpha channel, and let's move to the end of our timeline here. Uh, create some color bars because everyone knows what they look like. And we drag this guy down here. He's compositing properly. But if I bring this image, which is a non-pre-multiplied image, but has the same alpha, what's going to happen is it will not composite properly because DS thinks it's a pre-multiplied image, but it's not. So it's, it's pretty much the same as what we saw earlier in this thing, but now you know what you've done wrong in the capture settings box to, to, to produce this kind of result. When you uh, run into something like this, there are two things you can do. You can either delete the media and uh, recapture it with proper settings, or you can apply the pre-multiplication preset from DS, uh, which I have mapped here to my user toolbar, but you can also access it from DS presets, image effects, custom effects, pre-multiplication. This setting allows you to override the tag that's associated with the clip. So if I say non-pre-multiplied, that will tell DS, okay, there was a screw up. Treat this image differently. So now we can use this clip even though it's tagged wrong. Great, let's move on. I'm going to delete all this. Go over here. We have another set of bars and I will take that into a composite container. I will bring in our tutorial pre-multiplied clip just to see what we have there. I'll map it to the uh, to the output node. So that's our pre-multiplied guy. There's his alpha channel. And we'll bring a composite operator here and feed this into the composite. This is exactly what we had up on the timeline. But if we double click the composite and left click on the layer 2, you can see that there are pre-multiplication settings within the composite node as well. What, what auto means, it's set up by default it will take into account the tag that we tagged the file with. So if we, if we said uh, it's pre-multiplied DS composite operator will treat it as such. But we can override that and uh, say, well, no, this is a non-pre-multiplied image. And you see when I did that, I produced this halo around the uh, mad scientist's hair. And if I go to pre-multiplied, which will be the same as auto, uh, the halo goes away. And this is, this is obviously what you would want to use. 
Likewise, if I bring our image that's wrongly tagged as pre-multiplied, but it's really not pre-multiplied. There it is. He's, that's the original picture of guy is on the street. And I feed that into the composite street the background is adding to the, to the bars. But over here, if we tell DS this is not pre-multiplied, then we can still use this image. It's treating it correctly. Another operator that has pre-multiplication setting is the math operator. Let's, uh, let's drag it down here. And we'll actually put it here. We'll feed the non-pre-multiplied image to the mat, and then we'll send it to the composite. So, as you know, mat is used to uh, to create mats. I'm gonna just gonna do a not really well done mat of our guy. Look at look at the alpha channel. We'll fill it inside with white. We'll fill outside with black. So we're replacing the original mat. Remember, the original mat is still, the original alpha channel is still there, but the mat operator is overriding that because I'm filling it outside with black. And uh, turn anti-aliasing off and blur it a little to make it softer. So if we look inside the composite operator, we're telling it that the image is not pre-multiplied, which is correct. But if we switch this back to auto, you get this uh, blown out uh, background that's adding to the bar's background. Now this is not the only place where you can correct it. You can leave the setting in auto. There's also a setting inside the mat operator where you can force pre-multiplied. And we'll also disable keep original alpha. So now what's going on with uh, force pre-multiplied? We're forcing the pre-multiplied output out of the uh, mat operator. And if you view the composite, now it's compositing correctly. Whereas before it was not. So that's another place where you can control your pre-multiplication. The DS graphics tool is yet another place where you can set pre-multiplication. Here we have a soft edged circle. If I step back out to the timeline, we can see how it's feathering into the black. And uh, if I place a gray background behind it, you can see that it's doing what we expect it to do, which is taper off. But if the pre-multiplication is not set up correctly, if we, if we click on uh, the graphics clip effect and go to the options, by default alpha will be set to auto. If it's set incorrectly, you'll get something like this, which is really not our intent to have a dark halo around the object. So that's another place where you can set uh, pre-multiplication. When we're creating graphics in DS with the intent of delivering them to be used on another system, like Media Composer, for example, and those graphics have soft feather edges like this, while designing these graphics, we don't really have to take that into account. There's a preset that will fix them for us so we can deliver them non-pre-multiplied. So here's an example of a lower third. Uh, with a little bit of animation that tapers off into transparency. We can apply the pre-multiplication preset on top of that. In auto it doesn't really do anything, but if you select non-pre-multiplied and enable modify image, we get something like this, which looks hideous to our eyes because it just makes no sense and uh, there's all this noise activity going on and all that stuff. But if we look at the alpha channel, the alpha channel is unchanged whether or not this preset is enabled or disabled, it's it's still the same. So what happens when you deliver this to a compositing application that's using only non-pre-multiplied images, it will composite this properly because using the alpha channel it will create a transparency and all this stuff that we see is going to disappear. And I, you know, it, it's an interesting thing because more than once I've heard back from clients saying, well, these, these graphics look horrible, Something, something's gone wrong, you know, some, something's wrong with the render. But it's actually because the, the graphics are not pre-multiplied and, and you see this kind of a, what looks like a visual artifact. Those artifacts are especially pronounced if you use things like lens flares or anything that has soft feathered edges. So another example here is the circle that we saw earlier. Originally it was designed with a soft feathered edge, but if we deliver the circle as not pre-multiplied, the alpha channel is still the same, but the RGB values have changed to make it into a, into a non-pre-multiplied image. So even though this looks very wrong, it will actually composite properly later on. The bottom line is that the pre-multiplication preset is very, very useful, and you'll find it in DS presets slash image effects slash custom effects. This was a quick overview of pre-multiplication features of Avid DS and various tools. This is Igor from hdhead.com and it was a pleasure again to make another tutorial and I'll keep coming back with more.